Rosa Sharp here with a, uh, another Thought Bubble. On this episode, I'm just going to cover a little bit of Bitcoin news in the beginning, and then I want to talk about uh, customer service, if you will, within the cryptocurrency space. So first off, um, there's been some news that, uh, what was it? Well, first off, SegWit has activated onto the Bitcoin blockchain, the Bitcoin legacy uh, chain. It's set. This is August 23rd, 22nd, and it's set. It's now part of the chain. It is now part from here on out. Uh, you can choose to do SegWit transactions or you can use regular transactions, but that option has been set in. And from there, according to the initial roadmap, depends on whether or not that's going to change. Uh, SegWit 2X is going to activate in November. Again, we discussed about how a block date was set. And with that set date, the Bitcoin network is supposed to fork. Now, there's some contention there. There's been some knuffle that has happened this week. I'm just not going to get into it right now. I'm not ignoring it. I just I think there needs to be more information and more things need to be said. But overall, with uh, the SegWit activation on the Bitcoin legacy chain, then they can start adding things like uh, Lightning Network as a payment option. What was another thing? Uh, eventually, you know, um, confidential transactions. There's another di a number of different projects that have been kind of waiting in the wings, waiting for a SegWit activation in order to do these um, off-chain scaling options for Bitcoin. Now, in it, Another big news that's happened in the cryptocurrency space is the ether another Ethereum hack, another ICO through the usage of Slack, uh, social engineering, I guess, uh, stupidity on the part of the developers. They didn't have two-factor two -factor authentication, and they also shared uh, the same email and login information. About five, $500,000 worth of Ether was stolen from the Ignimba oh, project. And so a lot of these hacks are going to continue forward. And until developers get their act together, so people realize that some of these ICOs are just scams from the beginning or need to do further research before they uh, participate in these ICOs, a, a lot of this is going to happen. Uh, it happened initially in the Bitcoin space. You had all these web wallets. They either got hacked or exit scams. Same thing with uh, a number of different Bitcoin exchanges. Uh, there was a number of wallets that were exactly completely secure and it it took a while for bitcoin to have some kind of sense of security and safety again if you don't control your private keys then you don't control your coins and it's the same thing with these ico and tokens okay so i wanted to talk about or at least share a little bit of an anecdotal information personally in my life so everyone knows the tissue roll pop right there's the story of the shooting star, or um, the Indian, on the Tootsie Roll Pop. And if you were to somehow find on your Tootsie Roll Pop here, if you were to somehow, on this Tootsie Roll Pop, as you can see up here, there's the writer. Doesn't look like I got him. You would get free to zero pop well it's a myth no one knows how it started but ever since uh, tissue roll has been out in existence here uh, since 1931 uh, the company itself has been plagued with this kind of a customer service nightmare if you will where many many people think that they can redeem they found here a little Indian somewhere Shooting a star, the shooting star, if you will, or uh, the Tissue Roll Company, if you go on their website, and I have a link uh, in the video description below. Uh, if you find it, you you get a free Tissue Roll Pop, Tissue Roll Pop, and they've had letters sent to them, and throughout the years, um, on their websites, I've seen it. Maybe not their website, but another website is like 125 letters uh, every week for people, customers seeking to um, get a Tissue Roll Pop. Now, most people know that this is just bogus is bunk but kids still believe it and one of the fundamental reasons and I'll get into that is why it's still a pervasive theme it's a or what is a theme but a pervasive myth associated with the tissue roll pop but I what got me thinking about this 
was that it was announced uh, today, or maybe a little bit yesterday, that BitThumb, a major uh, Bitcoin exchange in Korea, is opening an actual center. They're opening up a physical office, which is going to be manned by up to 200 customer service reps, where uh, their customers in Korea can physically enter this building and talk to somebody in person. She Hulk, get down. That's my cat, She Hulk. She Hulk, take her to. Uh, and I think this is fantastic. Okay, I think this is something that exchanges need to do more often, where you can actually talk to a person one on one. Uh, they also have uh, phone lines, and this is one of the brilliant things is because of the nature of cryptocurrencies, and they have up to six coins listed. They have Ethereum, uh, they have both Bitcoins, they have Litecoin, and I'm not positive on the other two coins. But they're going to be manned 24 hours. Not only that, but they're going to have a specialist that's going to sit down and talk with you and talk about your account, but talk to you about cryptocurrency in general. And the reason why I think this is fantastic is one, it's 24 hours. So it's acknowledging that not only this is global, but trading occurs at any moment, any bit of time. Um, you hear this a lot about when it comes to mining and even exchange in general, where they have to put people on and off, off and on, and have constant 24 7 contact, contact with their product, which other types of services really don't really have that kind of contact. This is why like hacks occur like sometimes in the middle of the night or robberies or thefts and things of that nature. There's a, a low period in any type of business where you have a point of attack, if you will. And it's because people aren't up. People aren't active. There's no trading. There's no activity during this period of time. There's very few businesses really truly, well in a sense most things are 24-7, but really truly on the, the ground level are 24-7. I mean we have some 24-7 restaurants, stores, things of that nature, but not with the financial system. They they close on Sundays. They don't trade on holidays, major holidays globally, depending on uh, what the markets are. Um, federal holidays, big things, things of that nature. If there's a particular um, catas catastrophic event like uh, like 9/11, they, they shut down mar they don't shut down the markets. Um, they've done this, you know, with 7/11 and a few other terrorist events where local markets would shut down for that day and then be back back up the next day or the following day after the shutdown. But you know, the that's not with cryptocurrency. It does not matter what happens. A war can start between North and South Korea. And it can start in India and Pakistan. Or between China and India. And cryptocurrency will continue to go on. It will actually survive those type of fluctuations really because they're not their intrinsic value is not associated between a particular nation or a commodity or an ideology or any of the things that all these other global markets are so intertwined and mixed and tied to. And this made me think about just overall with the cryptocurrency space, how there is, and it's just not the cryptocurrency space, but just in general, I would say within the last 15 years, customer service has been a sharp decline. You're not talking to people, you're either talking to chatbots, series of emails, you're going on a forums and going through the different questionnaires to find your answers. It, it's a hard thing to actually get to speak to a person. And even if you were to find like a customer service number, which for some reason is like the direct email, like a customer service email and a, a phone number is very hard. You have to hunt and find or just Google it. And even then you have to Google it a couple of times to make sure you get the right email and the right number. You know, check your data, check your information. It's still a, a, a chore to actually speak to a live individual. And cryptocurrency is not immune to this, but it has a very serious problem. Coinbase, all the time. Uh, while Kraken, BitPay are known, and I think even Jim and I have live individuals, and BitThumb, as we talked about from uh, Korea, ha now has physical individuals in a physical building that they're opening up, 200 of them. They also have a, a customer service, you know, you can speak to somebody over the phone to talk to someone about your account, your information, or problems, or get some, you know, the ticket help. You know, the ticket help you always get for these exchanges. Uh, it needs to approve. Coinbase, because they're the number one basically exchange in America, needs to dramatically approve this. Other exchanges have to improve this. Uh, you hear these transactions all the time where a lot of it has to do with banking on the banking side, but a customer will contact their bank, settle things with their bank, but still have issues with the exchange. And they have to basically shame them or put them out on social media, whether it be Twitter, 
uh, bitcointalk.org or Reddit to say this is what happened to my account. Either going to the Pacific Reddit subreddit or the Bitcoin Talk forum and just shame to get their tickets heard, to get some help. And that's that's really bad. It's really bad for the cryptocurrency space that there's even at this point, in, we're at 2017 and the volume and trade and the billions of dollars have been invested that no one really has significantly invested the capital to customer service because is that old adage like if you have one disgruntled customer you might as well count 10 people off their list they're going to tell up to 10 people and those people can spread and you can get bad vibes and sure a lot of exchanges have bad vibes for a lot of different reasons but primarily when it boils down to um, if you get rid of the, the KYC and the MLA type of stuff it has to do with the way they're being treated and they're just not being treated well and so it this right here this made me think about this anecdotal thing that happened in my life. There's been three places in my entire existence, and they occurred um, as a, I was a child. But one particular place, um, when it's pretty much all of middle school up to high school in this area I lived, there was this convenience store that all us kids would go to. It was just, it had the slushy machine, it was a soda machine, the guy was kind of friendly. We were brats in the store, but. Uh, they weren't too harsh with us. Other places were like just, you know, too many kids, they'd kick you out, backpacks. Um, you couldn't put your bike up against here, or skateboards, you know, kind of get yelled at a lot. So you gotta, as kids, you know, we were being stupid kids, we run off. But this place we know, as long as we weren't too bug wild, uh, wouldn't run us off. But one of the things this guy did was, you know, he always had the best candy. And if you found the shooting Indian star, you can get a free Tootsie Roll Pop. Now, mind you, as I stated earlier, you know, this thing, this myth was plaguing the tissue roll company for years. They don't do it themselves, reimburse people. They don't even reverse their sellers. But this guy went out of his way. He would allow you to redeem it. Didn't matter if you bought the tissue roll, roll pop from his store or another store. He would just do it. And it was just, it just gave good vibes. Just overall, he did the extra mile kind of a thing. He was you know, not too pushy, you know, hey, how, how are you doing? He knew our names. I, when he would have a conversation, he would remember who we were, talked about us, joked with us a little bit, you know, not too much. He was still an adult. We were still kids. It was never across the line or anything like that. It wasn't a big salesman, showship thing. It wasn't like, when you come to stores, you always hear, welcome to Checkers or welcome to an X, you know, and it's kind of goes up and down in volume, you know. You kind of know that the, the customer service people have to say this. In fact, they there a lot of places require that they always say hello, welcome, whenever that door opens, whenever that chimes to greet people. And, you know, it's, it's fine. It's a customer service tactic. But it doesn't feel like, to me personally, it doesn't feel like a full-on welcome. It's like I know this is something you have to say. And you can kind of hear it in the tenor and the volume sometimes of customers when they have a long day and they still have to say that, you know. I want the person who's serving my food to treat me as a decent person, human being and stuff like that, but I don't want them to have to do like these checklist marks of engagement with the customer. I want the, the interaction to be more natural in conversation, just my personal thing. And I think it makes it much easier, particularly when you're for primarily in like retail space and stuff, they're inundated all the time with customer service stuff um, because that's what they're doing is customer service 24-7. So it just made me think about about how you know we have this thing going up with Bit thing, uh, Bit Thumb with Korea having them having, you know, uh, 200 customers 24/7 little center in South Korea. Um, the fact that it is very difficult to even talk to a person of a number of these different exchanges. Again, it's like I think Bit Thumb, Kraken, and maybe uh, Bit Pay. Perhaps you can get a person, but for the most part, it's chat bots and emails and forums for you to actually get some type of engagement from a company. And it also made me think with Coinbase, with it being a unicorn, and some of the acquisitions that it's made making, that perhaps, you know, maybe they should try, I don't know, invest in some of these um, downsized retail companies that are closing their stores that all have credit cards, you know, that individual credit card for the store, like the Macy's and the Nordstrom card and the Sears card. They're all cutting these customer service people out. Experience customer service people that know how to deal with people, know how to talk about finance, maybe they should look at these centers and start hiring them, training them to understand um, the cryptocurrency world because they already have the customer service skills. They have already have an understanding of finance. They've probably been doing this for years or decades, so they know how to talk to people over the phone at different 
social economic levels, at different economic levels, at different speaking levels, at different languages. You know, it's just like not just English. You know, Spanish, Chinese, um, whatever, if you will, and start you know investing and hiring and having a customer service branch to actually engage with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, treat them as a human being, because you're you're dealing with finance, you're dealing with money. There's a lot of new people in this space. You have to do a little bit of educational stuff with, when it comes to uh, financing and interacting and engaging in the crypto space. But you're dealing with people's money and people get really attached and very emotional and get really hot and heated. And if you want to continue growth, it'd be important to maybe just kind of take a step back and, take, and, and figure out what it's actually of value. What is more important? Um, you know, what type of engagement do you want with people? And it just kind of made me think, you know, back in the day, that the, the guy that is dealing with annoying pre-president and primarily teenagers on a daily basis. Again, we were brats. We were. But, you know, treating us kindly, treating us, you know, civilly, treating us as people. Um, doing little things while, you know, allowing us to do a little bit of free ups of sodas, uh, Tootsie Roll Pops, having the best candy not being a dick to us and we wouldn't be a dick back to them just because we were kids or we were just a little too loud and garnering like you know that customer service if you will that little bit of thing that made people want to come to a store and actually not just hang out in the parking lot or something like that but actually spend money in the store you know gather our nickels and quarters and dimes our lunch money or our allowance money or you know if someone worked you know the babysitting money and spend money within his store you know when mom and dad would go by, or you know, your parent would go by the, the store, say, "Hey, why don't you get gas over there? It's a good place, and we can get some candy." You know, and you say that often enough, eventually, you know, your parent will drive over over there and get their gas and and, and go to the store, and there's another customer. So it just made me think of that. It's not you know nothing big. It's just a little anecdotal, and just made me think, you know. I'm on hearing, you know, the bit thing, bit thumb thing about Korea, the 200 plus live individuals in a center, that we can need to do better in this in this customer in this uh, cryptocurrency space. We need to do better with the customer service, because if we want to get next level, if we want to actually reach global, I, it goes beyond just having the best product in the world. Because you can have the best product in the world, but if you treat people shabbily, if people can't engage with you with you on a one-on-one -on -one human level then why are they going to fucks with you? Really, they'll, they'll go to the, the second best place because that second best place may still not have the best product in the world, but you know what? They know their name, they have a, you know, a natural conversation, and they care about them on an individual basis. So that's it. That's my thought for the day. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, you know what to do for the YouTube? You know, rate, subscribe, and share. Oh, and this is Sherry, by the way. to the moon.